This is like as a Cadillac should be. This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. Behind me is the most requested car for the last year that I should drive. You guys have really been asking almost forcefully for me to drive the Cadillac Lyric and today I'm happy to say that is finally happening for the first time. This is actually the first time I've been able to get a even walk around or any sort of main video on the Cadillac Lyric. We checked it out together briefly at the Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance where we of course just saw the car briefly and I sat inside of it, but today we are going on my initial drive and everything like that. So I'll walk you through why it took so long, what I had to do to get this car on the channel, and then of course we'll go for our first driving impressions. We'll take it up into the mountains, we'll drive it down the highway, we'll drive it in the city streets, we'll then go to a DC fast charging station and see what's up with the charging performance. There's so much to explore. I have this car for five hours, let's go have some fun. You join me at Capital Buick GMC here in the San Jose area. Now, some of you may know we are at DGDG, the owner of this dealer group, Del Grande Dealer Group, and those are the people that gave me the Coda Electric. You may remember just a few months ago, maybe it was only two months ago, we found a Coda Electric that was a barn find, abandoned in the back of that lot. They were the original retailer of the Coda EV through Coda of Silicon Valley. And I was so lucky that uh, my friend Nick, who works here, called me up, said, come on over. We found the car. We did a whole series. And at the end of it, they gave me the car. So now I have the Coda back in Colorado. Sort of a neat story. And uh, yeah, I was texting Nick recently about the Coda. And I'm like, hey, dude, do you have any lyrics? Because there are no press car lyrics available pretty much anywhere in the country. There was a first drive event that we, uh, our invitation must have got lost in the mail to drive this vehicle, but we, we were not invited to that. Um, I know some friends of mine have, and Tom's done lyric stuff and other things like that, but it's good to get an out of spec video on most electric cars. At least that's my goal. And so I thought, okay, well, as soon as they hit the press fleet, Let's get in and go for a drive and do the Lyric stuff. And unfortunately, they just never have made their way into the media review pool, if you will. I don't know what's going on if they're waiting for software or waiting for hardware, but what we had to do was find one. And I have to say a huge thank you because there are plenty of viewers who have just recently taken delivery of their Lyrics who offered their cars to me in Alabama, in Missouri, in New York, and of course here in California. And I thought, oh, this is just amazing that uh, you know you guys are so cool to let me drive and borrow your car. But I already talked to Nick and I said, hey, do you have one? It's a service loaner, this particular car. I'll walk you through that story. And he said, yeah, just come on up and drive it. We also have have Hummer EV SUV and some other vehicles. So I'll actually be filming more than just this here. I thought, okay, one stop shop. Let's get two or three cars on the channel in one go at Del Grande dealer group. And that is the plan. So that's why I have not gotten a Lyric on the channel. I've tried really hard. I've emailed Cadillac a bunch. I've asked for all of it. Get a really nice Hellcat startup right over here. Um, but we're focused on the EV Lyric. So there's my explanation. Let's get into the rest of the video and actually walking you through this entire car. So let's explore this vehicle sort of tip to tail together for the first time. Truly, I'm so excited to bring you through this. And before we go through the car, I wanna walk you through what is the version of the Lyric that we're looking for. Also, there will be chapters throughout this video, so if you just wanna to skip to performance driving or super cruise or charging, I'll leave those sectioned off as we hopefully have a great day with this vehicle. Uh, this is a Cadillac Lyric and it is the luxury trim. The vehicle comes in three trim levels, tech, luxury, and sport. Tech is the base trim, luxury is the middle, and sport seems to be the top. Personally, I think the luxury is the way to go. You're getting a Lyric to be comfortable. This is not meant to be a performance car, although the all-wheel drive version does have five 
1,200 horsepower, but you're getting this to be a comfortable daily driver, and it's all about, to me, the massaging seats, that AKG sound system that I can't wait to sample. So I think the luxury trim, as we're sampling here, makes a lot of sense. But then there's also drivetrain options. In each of those trims, you can get rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive's 340 horsepower, correct axle right there. All-wheel drive, 500 horsepower. I believe they're dual permanent magnet motors or a single permanent magnet motor in the rear and a uh, big ass battery in this thing 100 kilowatt hours usable the it's gm kind of reports their battery capacities in a weird way and maybe i'll do a video on that at some point in the near future a lot of times they just won't tell anyone what the battery pack capacity is but at least online the general consensus seems to be 102 gross and 100 usable which is a very small buffer so i imagine they have an 80 percent or 90 percent daily charging recommendation on this vehicle so you got a big battery you got 314 miles of EPA range in this trim. I think it's just over 300 in the all-wheel drive trim. You have two wheel sizes. These are the 20s. You can also option for the 22s. The 22s look awesome. I would say give up the range, get the big wheels, and that luxury three trim uh, would be the way I would do it at least. Um, and then, you know, there's been some questions for me about Lyric. Uh, but before we get into that price, you got to know the price of this thing. This car, as tested, is mid sixty thousand dollars. It's like sixty three grand MSRP. That seems very reasonable, very reasonable, and it also qualifies for the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit. So right off the bat, you're getting a vehicle that certainly is priced higher than a Model Y, than a Mustang Mach-E, than a Hyundai Ioniq. It's definitely on the top end of those, but it's also below BMW iX, Audi e-tron, Mercedes EQE, if you know what I mean. So it sort of fills this middle of the road gap where you're not necessarily a, you know, premium, but not necessarily luxury uh, electric CUV like Model Y, but it's also not a BMW iX that's going to be 80, 90, 100 grand by the time you spec it up. So I think this is a really cool niche. There's not many competitors in this exact price segment and um, the sizing just seems right. So let me take you on a tour. Let's open up the hood, open up the trunk, check out the seating position, typical out of spec long video. Um, but you guys will be exploring this vehicle with me together for the first time. I'm so pumped. Thanks to DGDG. And here it is, the Cadillac Lyric luxury <laughs> it's a cool looking car you know maybe from this from head on i'm not so into the design here i think this looks kind of lame when i come around the side though wow it looks neat no question though this design is only able to be done because it's electric the way the front grille is done and some other things it's a really cool look and this particular vehicle just got here it's the first lyric to get to dg dg a customer vehicle originally but then dg dg found out that they needed a service loaner in order to retail sale lyrics now this dealer group you guys know was the largest bolt dealer in the world they have so many evs to sell here in the silicon valley tech area and and so, you know, basically they use this car as a loaner car, as a demo car and allowed us to make a video with it, which is very nice. Trunk space seems okay, quite large, um, not anything huge. I'm trying to think, see what's in this little bag. Okay, we got some netting. So they have a, a bag to put your, your trunk nets that no one will use. Is there under floor storage? There appears to be. Let's open this up. Oh, wow, quite large under here. It's also a mobile EVSC, I imagine. We'll definitely take a look at that and explore to see what's going on there. So let's actually do that right now. Let's open this thing up, see what we got inside this container. Excuse the poor filming quality. It is just me today, so we're not able to do too much. But if you look here, you'll see that typical Ultium mobile EVSC, 12 amps, 32 amps, very nice. And uh, yeah, so I mean, very plasticky, not very premium. This does not feel to match the Lyric in my mind, but then I think about the price of the Lyric and I go, okay, well, maybe it's not as luxurious as I would imagine a Cadillac would be. It comes with a NEMA 515 plug or a NEMA 1450 right there. So you could do 12 amps or 32 amps. 
in my impression, it really should have been a 40 amp unit for EVSC for uh, NEMA 1450. So that's um, that's interesting, not ideal, but not terrible. At least it comes with a cable. Many EVs do not these days because they just expect you to have it. Looks like we have a release here for the seats to fold. Very nice and easy. You can see that almost flat floor through here. I imagine this is some sort of aftermarket or accessory and I can tell it's getting caught up on this little bag that they've included there. <laughs> so let's close the trunk. That's a fairly sizable trunk. But you can also tell that you're giving up a little bit of space for this sloping roof line back here. And also, somehow your taillights have turned into side lights. I don't, don't really know what's up with that look there. To me, this is maybe the worst part of the car is whatever's going on back here. But um, hey, that's okay. That's a very personal thing to like styling or not. We're not going to get too much into it. What I will say are the door handles are weird. So... This little handle is identical to Mustang Mach-E almost, but Mustang Mach-E is a door release right here. You push the button, the door pops out and we go. So you can in one motion, push button, open door. But here you have to push down here and then open your door. And the way this works is there's a plunger that comes out of the door. You can see right here and that pushes out. So I wonder if we can, if I can show you this. So let's close it. Let's, I'll hit open. And then it actually won't even close back in. So you can't pinch your fingers. As soon as I open the door, yep, there you go. Plunger flies back in. Really cool idea. Um, but I think the execution's almost worse than Maki. Also, why do you need such a large handle on your door? This bit doesn't even do anything. You can't even push in. It isn't until you get to about here where it drops that it actually becomes functional. So I think that's weird. I think it honestly would have looked cooler without the door handles at all. And then you have back here a door that you reach in and you grab just like Maki. So they really copied Ford on this whole uh, door situation. And I have no no issues with that. You know, it, I think it's fairly intuitive and better than a Model 3 door handle that a lot of people still don't, are not used to this whole twisting motion to get in. So in the rear seat, I just let me run around to the other side and put the other one up so we can look at rear seat room over here. Yeah, I mean, the doors are quick enough. It doesn't seem to be getting in my way. You just smack the door, open it up, and we're good. So I have the driver's seat set for myself, and I'm six foot one. So let's jump in, take a look at leg room in here. The other nice thing is I've left the vehicle running because it actually has a start button, which is weird because Silverado EV does not. So GM seems to be changing their logic. But I'm sitting basically behind myself, and there is plenty of room. This is a much larger back seat than I expected. Also, look at this glass roof. America, baby. Beautiful, huge glass roof in this particular one. And I don't know if it opens, but I believe it's optional to get an opening sunroof on this vehicle. I could be wrong, but this one doesn't have it at least. Really nice foot space under the seat. Leg room is great. Shoulder room is amazing. Let me just show you headroom back here. Headroom back here seems to be okay until I put my head back and then I get jammed in the roof. So I can't quite get my head to the, the headrest quite easily. So there is a, a detent right about here that seems to, that's where my head hits. But if I lean forwards and I'm just sitting normally, I don't really notice anything. There's quite a bit of room here. It just really comes down quite hard. And what I imagine is going on is this must be the mounting position for the rear trunk struts and latches and everything, so that's okay. What else do we have going on here? Very large back seat, really comfortable, nice materials too, center armrest with uh, some basic cup holders, nothing fancy going on there. Uh, I don't think they missed any marks back here at all. This all seems fairly nice. I'll show you a couple other little things up here, but um, back seat is basic. Does it have no, no heated rear seats or anything like that, at least in this particular trim? not finding the buttons for it. But let me show you some other stuff. Here we have a window switch and lock and unlock. This is how the door handle works. So you go in here and you have like this huge paddle that opens up the door. That's pretty wild, isn't it? You have your AKG plastic back here and also some interesting textures here in the wood. Uh, that's very nice. I mean, everything here is okay, but it all to me feels fairly plasticky. Um, and I'll talk about that as I get up front a little bit more about the perceived luxury of this car. Two USB-C ports here, 
and a 120 volt vehicle to load outlet. We love that. Also very glad there are um, air vents back here. I wish there would have been another air vent on the B pillar or up here on the roof, especially for dogs, animals, uh, or you know, even just people. I think these might be a bit weak and I'm feeling 100% of the sun coming through the glass here. So I am gonna sh close the shade because the tint on that roof seems to be very weak without the shade. Of course, there's many electric vehicles now on the market that have glass roofs with a lot of tint and it doesn't seem to be a problem. This one definitely does. So we'll close that up. Um, really cool seat design. There's a black interior. There's a tan interior, or I should say more of a gray. And then there's also in the luxury three trim, some really nice brown and other material colors and stuff like that. So this has like a blue strip running through it. I think it looks very nice. The back seat, certainly you could take another couple out to dinner in this vehicle, which I assume is going to be used quite often for something like that very very good back seat and you can see the size of the door is actually quite large even in relation to the front door so very pleased there before we go up to the front let's talk charging performance and we're going to test some of this out of course but i i've already opened up this port but i just want to say this might be the worst charge port door i've ever experienced take a look <laughs> it just comes out and blah, 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 blah. And we thought, you know, I had seen that at Amelia Island. I'm like, oh, prototype things. I cannot believe this charge port door, this terrible, made it to production. It's so flimsy, so wobbly, does not give me any confidence that this thing is going to last. Let's just watch this again. <laughs> It's terrible. And why does it need to be so big when your port is this small? And then, of course, this vehicle will get the North American charging standard, the Tesla port, uh, sometime in 2025. There's no reason why it needs to be this big. We've seen a similar charge port door on the Blazer. I really hope they smooth out this whole motion because, wow, this gives me zero confidence that this port is going to last really bad. Of course, the CCS connector will be going away long term. I imagine Lyric owners will be provided a CCS to Tesla adapter, or I should say the other way, NACS to CCS adapter to use the supercharger network or to use wall connectors or anything like that. So that will be great to see that this vehicle, you will be able to charge on the supercharger network in no time. Um, it has a 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger optional or a 40 amp uh, or is it 48 amp? I don't know, but I think it's 11 kilowatt standard. So it might be 48 standard and then 80 optional for the onboard charger. Um, you know, I don't actually think you really need the 19.2 kilowatt onboard charger unless you have, you know, a situation where you're driving often and you need to charge up quickly. Uh, at least right now, there just aren't many 19.2 kilowatt um, EVSEs out there in the public. And you certainly don't need one at home is my impression. Under the hood, um, maybe last comment on the charging performance for DC fast charging performance. I believe this vehicle has a peak somewhere around 190 to 200 kilowatts. We're certainly going to find that out later on in the video. Seems pretty weak sauce for only a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. I've also talked to my friend Tom Malogany from the State of Charge YouTube channel where he has DC fast charged one of these lyrics and had wildly variable results. It was, you know, violently surging all over the place. We could not figure out what was going on. And then it just kind of like sat at 40 kilowatts. And we're like, what? terrible charging performance. We've noticed similar things with the Hummer EV and the Silverado EV. Very odd charging curves from GM. I think they need to make a focus to dial in the consistency of their charging performance on the DC side. For example, our friends at All Electric Family have a Hummer EV SUV. Uh, no, they actually have the truck. They have an Edition 1 truck, and they found that if they charged with the air conditioning on in the vehicle, they only got about 40 or 50 kilowatts. But as soon as they shut air conditioning off it shot up to 200 i mean just weird things that should never happen to a production electric car so gm's got to work on that under here we have your fireman high voltage cut loop so you go right here cut that and the car will shut down basically in the event of a collision but i also think that maybe it doesn't instill lots of confidence that you have a big fire fireman hat on your electric car when you open the hood it's the risk of fire is very low although this is gm and they did build bolts so okay you have windshield washer fluid right here. That's really the main fluid you have to worry about. You have your ground negative terminal right there. You also have your 12 volt battery under here. I'll show you this in a second, but no front trunk, no storage. 
uh, nothing going on up here for extra storage. And also these plastic panels really fit together like crap. I'm sorry, but that's, this is a Cadillac. Should be way more premium than that. This doesn't open, but I'm gonna rip it up anyway. So here we go. Front compartment. Let's just pull this down. It's got a nice little handle on it actually. And now you can see where the front trunk should have gone, where there's actually room for it. You could have had a little compartment here, maybe moved some of these components around and very easily had storage, but no. So I'm not convinced that they really optimized every bit of the car just based off of seeing how much empty space is here and they didn't want to give it to the consumer. 12 volt battery is right here, of course, so that's very user accessible. You can see some onboard charger, maybe inverter down here, and then of course, uh, just some small power electronics. I imagine in the all-wheel drive version of this car, this will take up more space because you'll have the front motor. This one's just the rear wheel drive, the 450E, which I believe refers to the Newton meters of torque of maximum power output, which is a very weird metric to rate a vehicle in. I'm not exactly sure why Cadillac does that. For example, their Escalade is the Escalade 600, and it, it really has no relevance to today's, uh, you know, a gauge of performance, at least in our market, we don't ever talk about Newton meters of torque. So, oh yeah, it, still you got to slam the hood so hard. And even that wasn't hard enough because once it's down, you cannot actually push it down any further. It needs to be up very high and a big slam to get that thing to latch. So very odd. Like there's a lot of good and a lot of interesting and a lot of maybe not so good going on here so far. Um, Let's jump inside here. I'm going to slam the hood shut. So let's do that. And then I wanna take you on a tour of the interior cabin and I'll probably move the car slightly away so we have some room to move around. So hood, I'll slam it and I'll meet you in here in the cabin. Will you join me inside the Lyric now? And what a cool cockpit, truly. Um, for me, okay, touch points are one of the most important parts of a vehicle. So it needs to be a high quality steering wheel. Here we can see the Super Cruise light up here, but then also a very high quality turn signal feeling and also a high quality shifter. And this vehicle passes the test. The shifter and turn signal quality on this vehicle is great. It's not Rolls Royce level or any seven series, but it is more than the price would suggest. And that's where to me, a car feels premium is because you're touching this a million times a day, hitting your turn signal and you're putting the car in and out of gear all the time. It needs to be cool and interesting and uh, just, you know, sort of premium and this is so i'll just quickly initially tell you how to put it in gear first of all foot on the brake of course and then you pull it back and then that unlocks the parking pull and then you go you know drive or up to reverse and then you push the button for park so if you get in the car it's just boom drive it's awesome and uh, so really a big fan of this same shifter style we've seen on the uh, silverado ev the rear trunk is not open so there's a problem with this one where it thinks the trunk is open, but it's actually not. We've closed it. I'll push it hard, but I'm pretty sure it is closed. Okay, let's work our way left to right. So we have our seating controls here. We have cooling, heating, and back heating only if you don't want butt and back. So some people prefer just heat on the back. You can run, you cannot run cooled and heated seats at the same time. Ah, oh, what a bummer. It's a very weird thing, of course. This is where you can set your to memory position and your easy entry position, you know, where you want the car to uh, basically put the seat to when you open the door. You have very basic seat controls, so you can push the back up and down. The motor's a little bit louder than I would expect in the seat, but not bad. Okay, you can move the seat, of course, forward and back, up and down on both sides as well, so that's great. And then you get this little twist knob and joystick on the side that's very interesting. And I believe if I twist it or push it in, or pull it out, I should be able to get to the massage seat setting. Maybe I need to exit here, aha, there we go. Then I can go massage lumbar. I think it only offers a lumbar massage and I can go roll on one, two, three. So it's very similar to like an ID4 massage where it's just this center section of the seat massaging. You don't get the individual, you know, real kneading and knurling massage that you would out of a, uh, you know, Mercedes EQE or, um, 
Audi e-tron, but again, the price is nowhere near there. Very interesting vent controls. You can see you can open this up, knurled finish on this, uh, and it's a different knurling than, uh, than on this one. I thought you would see a little bit more consistency in the cabin, especially for a Cadillac level vehicle where these things kind of do matter, at least to me when we're reviewing sort of a higher luxury vehicle. A parking brake on and off uh, button. You have your lane departure, auto hold on or off. So fasten seat belt for auto hold. It's just letting me know right there. So that's great that it at least has that. You have your dashboard brightness. We'll get to the infotainment here in just a little bit because that's going to require quite a bit of exploring. Also more air vents down here. You can see them directly affect the uh, air uh, movement in there. Feels, uh, feels interesting. Maybe slightly plasticky on all the knobs, which I think is a little bit, you know, like all of this looks like metal, but it's just plastic and it just the noises very crunchy definitely not much not much weight behind this stuff stuff you wouldn't really find in again in e-tron or an ix but again very much nicer than maki -E or model y so it, everything here is fitting of the price but i wouldn't call it luxurious i would call it you know maybe premium or perceived luxury for some people perhaps really nice door card over here on this side the seats are gorgeous they have um Let's see, they have speakers in the headrest, ventilated and massage and heated seats all the way down. Very flat looking back, but so far very comfortable. We'll of course test them out over the five hours today that I have this vehicle vehicle or so. It looks like I, I can adjust our distance for Super Cruise here. We can change the speed up or down. We have Super Cruise is this button right here. We have a heated steering wheel, cruise control off and cruise control on. We have some other track stuff. We can scroll through, you know, next track, I imagine, or this will probably scroll through the menu settings is what it kind of looks like. And then you can go volume up or down. So very nice horn test, nice horn, very standard as you would expect. Coming over here, we have some different menus that we can scroll through. So buckle seatbelt, well, why don't I do that? And this is basically changing the main display on the screen to show us what's going on. One thing I am noticing though, it keeps saying rear hatch is open, but it's not, so I'll cancel that. Um, one thing I am noticing is it's not telling me my battery pack percentage anywhere. And you know, it's great to know how much range I have with 225 miles, but what is that in percent? So that's kind of silly actually. Maybe there is a way to show it, but uh, I remember talking to Tom about this and he wasn't able to find it, of course. So that's, that's very odd. So you get this energy layout, you can get a map layout, if you want to drive with Google Maps, turn on location, okay? So this is just part of like having Google integrated in the car. Polestar makes you do the same thing. So we got to go to, because we're the first ones to really ever drive this car, we have to go to settings and then we have to say turn on. Now we can do all this. Okay, great. When Maps is open, share. Yeah, we'll just let it share data all the time, not our car. And then uh, share data, EV data with Google. Cool. Wow, now we have like a freaking awesome cockpit look. Now these red lines that you're seeing on the camera are not showing up to my eyes in person. That seems very interesting. And the first test, of course, is let's see how the route planning is. So we're, of course, here in San Jose, and we want to go to Fort Collins. So very fast response here of looking up things instantly, actually. I really love these Google integrated systems and uh, multiple chargers needed. So let's say, okay, add the charging stops. There we go. It's planned out our entire charging route. You can see typically I would go I-80 back, but unfortunately there's no chargers through Wyoming for CCS vehicles. So um, yeah, once the, this vehicle does get access to the supercharger network, we can go this way. There actually are uh, now CCS chargers out here and this car might have enough range to do the I-80 route, but it is slightly sketchy because you're going through the middle of nowhere. And it's showing it wants to get us to Electrify America at very high states of charge, 35, 50%. This is not the out of spec road tripping way. Two hour charge, hour 47 minute charge. So this is weird because we've seen Lyric have a terrible charging curve according to Tom's initial test. Why is the car predicting such long charging sessions? It wants us to do this one for two hours and 34 minutes at this charging station. Maybe this car does have a charging problem. We need to test it for sure. Because if the software thinks it takes this long to charge, then I cannot recommend the Lyric to you. This could be the make or break of the whole car. 
Okay, so that's worth definitely testing out. And then there's a screen clean mode that goes all dark so you can wipe down. Oh, no, not screen clean, just clean design. Uh-huh. Okay, we'll keep it on the gauge for now. This seems to be the standard situation. Um, just walking you through briefly the functions of this main display, very similar to the other GM EVs we've tested. Um, there's auto park assist in this particular vehicle, CarPlay, things like that. Let's just see if we can find any electric vehicle interesting topics. Yep, so it says a recommended 80% charging limit. We're going to set it to 100% for now, but it does recommend... Yeah, 80% for daily driving right there. So that's that's what it wants. Uh, interesting, it's going. <laughs> so now it goes up and down by five, but if you bring it up to a you know an odd number, then it just adds or subtracts five. This is weird. Okay, so we'll leave it at 100 because we might get to a charging station. Um, let's see what else we got here. We have Cadillac account, make charging easier. I don't know, maybe for stations. You have your manual battery preconditioning, allowing, uh, yep, so in colder temperatures, you hit that and boom, DC fast charging is started. I also believe, and I'll just keep this running for now, just so we can also burn a little bit more battery, but I also believe manual DC preconditioning, uh, or it will automatically precondition if we put in a uh, charging station in the system that requires it. So that's great to see. Looks like we have, uh, so we're in that charging menu right now. There's also a drive mode menu. So there's tour. Okay, very cool. For city or freeway driving, balances performance and range. Very cool. There's sport, spicy, one pedal driving on and off selection I can do right there. That's kind of cool. This says for a more responsive experience, increases power output and tightens vehicle handling. So perhaps you even get more um, yeah, more power in this mode. I'm just reading over here. Use smooth and controlled motions to accelerate and brake for a more controlled ride. Maximize mid-corner traction by braking before turning and accelerating after. Okay, very interesting. There's snow and ice, and then there's my mode, and this is where we can configure my mode. So let's do this. So how responsive you want the steering feedback, which basically is just your lightness of steering. I'd say tour is nice for daily driving. Your braking feel, I really like a, a sporty brake pedal. Acceleration, maximum. Motor sound, nothing. So I guess they pump in some fake noises. We'll keep it in tour. And then that's how we have set up my mode. So when I select my mode, now you know how that's all set. Very cool. Interesting stuff here. What else do we have? I think that should be most of it. There is weird, there's no like buttons to open the glove box or anything. So you have to go into the controls menu and then you can get your one pedal driving. You can get your dome light on. You can do um, auto high beams on or off. You can open up your glove box, which is such a weird situation. There's also another glove box right here that kind of pops out. Unlike Aria, this one's not powered, but it is very slow. Yeah, very Cadillac. Uh, USB-C port down there, USB-C port right here as well, which is nice, with a little cubby hole with a wireless charger, so you can just slide your phone in there. Um, volume knob, and you can, of course, control this whole touch screen using this iDrive-like controller to slide everything around and move it around. Personally, I think touch screen works perfectly. I would have probably actually removed all of this and added storage, but um, I imagine... Cadillac people want this. Maybe it's an older demographic. I'm not sure. Either way, I think this is probably going to have the youngest, other than Escalade, the youngest buyer for Cadillac um, will probably go for Lear because it's kind of a cool car. You got Wi-Fi hotspot. I think that's kind of it. Let's focus on the driving bit because that's what we're really here to do is to drive this car. But I got everything set kind of the way I want it. I'll take one last breeze through settings here. I'll let you know if I find anything interesting. But other than that, let's just jump in this thing and let's go... Super Cruise lane change automatic. Yeah, well, we'll let it try to do automatic lane changes, collision stuff, great. All these great safety features, love all this. Yeah, let's go drive this thing. 
Well, you join me now inside the Lyric, ready to go for our first drive. Now, I've just inched this car around the parking lot slightly, but it's so far my initial impression is just great of the driving stuff, so I'm really hoping that holds up here. I walked you through all the driving modes in the previous clip, but we will be in the tour mode, which is the key up setting, and so this will be the standard mode. I just wanna get the steering wheel straight so I can show you how the shifter uh, works just again. Basically, we have the car on. There is a power button in this vehicle, unlike seemingly future GM electric vehicles like Silverado EV does not have a power button. That's the correct way. Get in, wait in the seat, put it in drive, go. And there's no need for a start button in these vehicles. Interestingly, I can also tell that the vehicle uses a parking pawl inside the gearbox. So, you know, it's a single reduction gear, but it basically locks the rear wheels uh, mechanically with a with a parking pawl rather than using the electronic parking brake. It will use the electronic parking brake if you park on a steep enough hill, but some electric vehicles choose not to have the physical park lock. Um, and I guess GM just likes to keep it old school with the physical park lock. It's a minor thing, shouldn't impact your ownership experience, but some Sometimes you'll put it in park and you'll feel the thing rock back and forth rather than hearing an electronic you know, clamp and then the vehicle's stationary there. It also means you can't put it in park while you're inching forwards, which I accidentally did before because I'm so used to my Tesla where if I'm even moving like a half a mile an hour, I'll just hit park and get out. And then the parking brakes will clamp and it will just kind of nicely come to a stop and lock itself. But here I put it in park and went, <laughs> actually that's yeah exactly what happened. And uh, yeah, just rocked really hard on that parking pole. So it's not my preference, but I understand why they do it as a backup fail safe situation. Uh, what I want to do first is whenever we drive a new vehicle, we always talk about the low speed driving characteristics, how the vehicle inches around, how it feels. So again, single motor version here into drive. Um, I'm going to put the car in a key up setting, which is tour mode in drive, one pedal drive off and auto hold off. I've lifted off the brake pedal and it is slowly creeping forwards. Two miles an hour, maybe two or three miles an hour. Right now, two miles an hour is the target creep speed. Pretty slow and actually different than other GM EVs I've tested. So it's dead smooth, no motor cogging, nothing like that. I will put it on a steep hill and feel if we can hear it grind a little bit at low speed, which is indicative of typically permanent magnet motors at low speed. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll pull this paddle on the left. There is a regen paddle. So if I pull the regen paddle, it comes to a stop and I do believe it keeps the brake lights on in the rear, which is great. Escalade V in front of us. Let's hope they make a Lyric V at some point or an Escalade IQ V. <laughs> also, I, I really don't want to give Cadillac too much crap about their naming, but their naming schemes suck because um, Escalade Ick, Celestique, Lyric, everything has to end in IQ, but it just doesn't work for Escalade. So what is it going to be when you get Escalade ESV IQ V? <laughs> it's too many, too many letters. Anyway, uh, yeah, creeping along here, uh, all is normal. I hit the accelerator pedal, it accelerates, I lift off, and it will very lightly regen. I mean, it almost feels like it's coasting. There's no L mode like other uh, GM EVs, like Bolt, for example, but it will coast down again, three miles an hour, now it's cruising along. Here's my Model S on a DC fast charger while I film this video. And then, of course, to come to a stop, I can either touch the brake pedal, which feels really good on initial press, or I can pull the regen paddle. Alternatively, I can turn on one pedal driving. And one pedal driving means I have a little bit now longer pedal to get the thing moving, but I can also lift off and the vehicle will come completely to a stop fairly smoothly. It wasn't the best I've ever experienced, but it also wasn't bad. It just seems to take a little while to lock in there at the end. Here's a hill I want to test the, the feeling on. So one pedal driving, accelerating, 12 miles an hour, lift off, hit of regen, 15 kilowatts of regen, it gives me a little display, comes to slow down and then we're locked in. So that's pretty great. This is the steep hill that I wanna feel the motor cogging on. By the way, amazing turning radius. I could do a whole video just under five miles an hour. Um, so we're parked on this steep hill. I heard the motor a little bit, let's accelerate away. Yeah, I don't know if you'll pick it up on video, but I hear this low grinding as it's not annoying, it's not weird, it's not anything unusual, but it is uh, not dead silent like some electric cars. So I would say that's fine, it's acceptable uh, NVH from the motor, but not, um, you know, not like Ro Rolls Royce would never let you hear that, you know what I mean? If you're driving one of their electric uh, two-door situations, yeah, you wouldn't, wouldn't hear that. So 
again, keep in mind, Cadillac Lyric, not top luxury, but very premium almost borderlining on that luxury feel. Um, you know, maybe very, very similar to the Genesis GV70, if you will. That's really the what I would say kind of falls in line with this vehicle in my head. So right turn signal on, pulling out on the street for the first time. We're gonna take some highway and some back roads. Initially, I'm gonna go up to Alice's Restaurant, which is a very famous car enthusiast restaurant in the Silicon Valley area and the San Jose area. Great driving roads. We'll get it on the highway. I wanna drain this as much as possible. Nice new G-Class in front of us as well and um, yeah should be kind of fun so we're now out on the road initial acceleration wow smooth silent very nice this is like as a Cadillac should be I think you know the ride quality feels okay on initial impression doesn't really feel like we're on air suspension or anything like that but for a steel suspension not bad interesting getting a couple little rattles back here to the back right so i'm not sure what's going on with that up here in the roof yeah some rattles in the car okay it's an early one not sure uh, but with one pedal driving on let's just test the regen here 60 miles an hour roughly 58 59 60 and full off this is rear wheel drive 115 kilowatt peak regen in the rear wheel drive right there that's not even blending brakes so very impressive uh, regen with this one pedal on. So I really like this mode. That's how I would drive it probably. We have not tested the acceleration off the line, although this looks like a perfectly good place to do so. So let's uh, just mat the throttle as we pull out of here. Ready to go, does it let you boost it? Yes, it lets you power brake it on the brakes, but I'm just gonna nail it from a stop. And we are in tour mode. Now sport mode in the display says it will give us more power. So we'll have to test both back to back but uh, waiting for the light to go green and floor it. Fine performance. Ramps up full 270 kilowatts at about 50 miles an hour. Not that fast, <laughs> but also not that slow. I think that was exactly as expected, which is maybe slightly slower than expected in the rear wheel drive, but it certainly has enough power to get out of its own way and be totally fine for this type of driving. So. Uh, that's fine. Let's put it into sport mode and see if this gives us any more. Oh, the display has changed now. No extra power in sport mode initially. That was only 263 kilowatt output. So, and it didn't feel any faster to me. It made a little bit more noise. Let's just slow back down here slightly. Slight delay. Okay, so it's not a speed racer. So right off the bat, that 340 horsepower feels more like 240 horsepower. I'm not sure what's going on there, um, but the car, the steering feels pretty damn good actually. Um, but the, the power, if you're just cruising normally, which we'll get to of course later in the video when we're on the highway, I'm sure is adequate. I've seen quite a few limo companies actually start to use Lyrics and that makes sense with that big backseat room, with how quiet and refined this cabin feels. Um, really, I have not heard anything on the outside of this vehicle at all, which is a total change from my Model S. <laughs> I just got out of the Model S and that thing is creaky, rattly, and very, very loud. And here we have a driver that's past the age that they should probably be allowed to drive. They're holding up traffic, but we will just give them space and not get in their way. Yeah, just cruising around normally doing the sort of daily run here. Wow, the size feels perfect. The steering feels really good. Um, initial impressions are great in the Lyric. 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. The price at $63,000 is probably maybe five or $8,000 under where I would expect for this car to come in. So it feels like it's a lot of value for money. Um, and so let's go take it up in the hills and see how it does as we continue driving it sort of in a sporting manner. Again, probably better suited for the all wheel drive or maybe a future V performance variant, but it's good to know what the base car can do. So let's go see if we can have some fun with it. Just jumping on the highway now for about, I don't know, five or 10 minutes or so before we get over to the canyons. And I figured, well, let's just talk about the highway cruising capability of this car. We are in tour mode. And first of all, so quiet, very, very quiet. I'm also noticing quite a bit of like, just seemingly uh, tram lining almost, or is it electronic? 
it, it almost feels like there's something going on either with the road surface that we're getting moved around on. And I think it is the road surface because I'm kind of watching everyone else wiggle around, uh, but very odd surface to be driving on initially. It makes the car feel very loose, almost like the whole suspension's disconnected, but it's not. It's just the road surface. Let's try out Super Cruise here. So Super Cruise unavailable, turn on Adaptive Cruise. Okay, so I got to turn Adaptive Cruise on and then I can hit Super Cruise. And I have it set to 70 miles an hour with this green light, which means I can take my hands off the wheel and look ahead. Also, I mentioned the point about the uh, Apple CarPlay integration on Twitter, and a Twitter user, Nebula, who's very, very familiar with GM products, said I could pull up Apple Maps here on the main display. So not only can I have my map display or my music display on the uh, you know, sort of instrument cluster for the uh, you know user interface, but I can turn this entire front display rather than using the Google Maps built in to use the Apple Maps, and that is a wonderful implementation, truly great. Because I thought the CarPlay screen was a little bit lacking with these big borders, very similar to how Lucid does it. It just doesn't fit with the screen, but having it on here is very nice. So that's cool. Um, let's bump the speed up to 75 miles an hour. There is no. No road noise being transferred into this car. Almost, at least on this surface, I would say zero. It's very quiet. There is a bit of wind noise in the car. When we hit that concrete, I can hear it, but it just seems so quiet, so refined, more than I would have expected, actually, considering the material quality in the car. The quietness and the refinedness is at a price point, or giving you the experience, automatic lane change, of course, very nice. It's giving you the experience of a price point way higher than the $63,000 you're spending on this car. There's no vehicle that you can buy for 63 grand that feels this isolated from its environment. It's not quite e-tron, it's not quite iX, but it's really close. And so I'm very impressed with the overall um, ride quality, with the cruising smoothness. This is a car you would wanna go and do some miles in if it charges well. So the highway uh, stuff is really fantastic. I'm very pleased with that. Um, my friend Tom's done a highway range test on this vehicle, and uh, so you can reference his video for the range at 70 miles an hour. Hour. But of course, we'll do our own testing when we can finally get one to Colorado. That's not what today is all about, but it is interesting to experience this for sure. The car wants to make a left turn lane. It's looking for an opening, and I just double check that everything's around. Um, it vibrates the left side of the seat, very similar to Hummer EV and other vehicles we've experienced Super Cruise in, and it automatically made a lane change to pass this guy. Uh, and one thing I like about Super Cruise is it will like, kind of speed up to make gaps and stuff. It's really quite natural, less overactive on the lane changes than Tesla's autopilot, which seems to just want to get into the wrong lane all the time. And talking inside the Lyric is a very weird experience because I can tell the car has active noise cancellation. It almost makes me feel like I have those noise canceling headphones on and <laughs> there's zero echo from my voice. It's like what I'm saying is almost being canceled out. It's very weird. So I feel like I almost have to talk louder because my sound's being drowned out by their noise cancellation. That's an interesting experience. I can say I've only felt that in a few cars before. So very good noise canceling in here. Quiet, comfortable, great driver assistance on pre-mapped highways. Um, and so the Lyric is a highway mile muncher. Check mark. Wow, so good at that. I think I'll even put the massage seat on. I had it off because it's quite loud when you're sitting stationary, you hear the seat. But, um, Wow, very good stuff here. I really like the different gauges I can pull up. And so my initial impression on the highway, very good. Um, couple couple issues, uh, however. Super Cruise does not allow for lane centering on non-pre-mapped roads. So there's a lot of roads, like for example, uh, my friend Nick, who, who arranged the car for us, lives in Gilroy. When he drives a Super Cruise vehicle to Gilroy, it's just a single track road. It's heavily traveled, but he's not able to have any active lane steering or any active lane centering in um, a Super Cruise vehicle because it's not a mapped closed access highway where Blue Cruise and Tesla Autopilot and Mercedes system and Volvo and all these other competitors of this car allow for lane centering on non pre-mapped roads. Um, it, my Rivian has this limitation as well and I cannot tell you how annoying it is to not just stay in the middle of the lanes and keep a distance and I'll keep my hands on the wheel and then on pre-mapped roads give me the hands-free access so I think that's a big miss on Super Cruise's part but when you are on a road with pre-mapping uh, no question this thing has one of the best driver assistance systems ready to go and it's 
really a great highway cruiser. Wow, very impressed here with the Lyric so far. Um, however, there is one more annoyance with it, uh, which would be actually the build quality. Uh, I listened to the AKG sound system for a little bit in between those clips, and it sounds very good. It's very bass heavy. It's a very Kyle style audio system. I like like the sound a lot. But whenever there's a bass hit, the whole not just one area, the whole car rattled. Like it just felt like, you know, bass would hit, and I'd hear it like the entire roof structure of the vehicle creak, and uh, just little plastic pieces moving. It was not not very good. It almost felt like what um, you know. I imagine our e-tron's going to sound like when it has 150, 200,000 miles on it. Like all the the connections getting loose. Now, granted, this is an early production car, but this is a production lyric. This was at the dealer, ready to go to a customer, and the dealer bought it and put it into loaner service. So I'm not driving a prototype vehicle here at all. So these, the, I don't hear any rattles or creaks driving down the road right now, but I heard a rattle in the roof when we left, and when the base hits, there is a rattle in the car. And, and not just one, but the entire roof structure seems to, and the door card here seems to rattle very, very not uh, not good, especially as I really hate rattles. So that's a nick against the uh, the Lyric, and I kind of hope that's not where the cost savings went. I have to try another one to confirm that that's the case, but at least in this one that I'm experiencing, that's what I've got. Let's go hit some twisty roads, see how it feels to drive quickly. We'll jump back on the highway, drain the battery, and then we'll charge it up. That'll be the end of the video. You join me on some twisty roads now, and one thing that I actually haven't uh, found until this moment is there is a high one-pedal driving setting, which really increases the off-throttle regen. So let's get it all into sporty mode. I've turned traction control, ESC off, and traction control off. Selection unavailable under current conditions. Perhaps I need to be in sport mode for that. So to do that, I gotta go back through this menu, go back, back, back. I'll find a, actually, let's find a place to pull over and get the car set up because it's a lot of buttons. It's not just like an instant button. I gotta go through the menus here. So I'll just pull here to the right side on this little pull off, perfect place. Oh, I'm really excited now that I found one pedal high. That's a lot of regen. GM has been going crazy with their regen recently, so we're a big fan of that. I'll go to drive and park settings. Well, first of all, let's go to sport mode. So exit vehicle settings, drive mode, sport. So we have everything dialed up. I'll then go to controls, drive and park. I gotta go into traction control, hit ESC off and traction control off. I get the Sibilla track off notification here. One pedal driving high. So we got everything dialed up pretty high. So let's go have some fun in the Lyric and see if it's any bit of a sporting character. Full throttle. It's honestly not fast enough. Wow, I really have never felt 340 horsepower feel like so little. Oh, it feels soft too. Okay, so this is again not meant to be a performance car. It just did some regen drag control over that little bump. But wow, it feels solid. It's got very, very vague steering, almost Hummer EV steering, and it feels really heavy, but you can oversteer it, but even then I felt like stability control kick in. Maybe it's just so heavy. That's what I'm feeling. The car must weigh a ton, or at least it's tuned to feel like it weighs a ton. Wow. Uh, not, <laughs> already not very good at this. The steering's cool, because it feels, um, yeah, it feels like you are piloting a heavy vehicle, but um, yeah, let's just kind of cruise it gently. Again, uh, listening to the GM uh, uh, messages or whatever, the, their suggestions is be gentle with it. Slow down ahead of a corner. Really treat it like it's a Hummer EV on wheels. And then it can be a sweetheart in the corner. So just leaning on the brakes, but I'm going so slow. Full power. Come on, baby, let's accelerate. On the brakes. Brake pedal feels great. Tire squeal at like speed limit around a corner. Wow. Okay, so this has to be the least sporty, most comfortable-ish electric vehicle in this category. So this is not... It does want to rotate, but ESP I've hit off, but it definitely does not rotate under power. This is really funny <laughs> to drive quickly. Audi, just chill there for a second, dude. Um, 
wow, I didn't expect it to be, I don't want to use the word bad, but just not fit for this environment at all. Certainly it's like, you. I feel so removed from the road, from the steering field. There's no extra weight that happens as we get load on the car. It's sort of like a point and guess. And then when you put in steering, the whole car is just full deflection and the bushings are doing everything and it just feels very lumbering and very unsporty. I wonder how the all-wheel drive version is tuned in comparison, if it's any better or not, I'm not sure. And I wonder if there's ever gonna be a performance one. I can hear the AC compressor kicking on to do pre-chilling of the battery from driving hard, I imagine. So let's go up through here. A little bit of noise piped in through the slight construction zone. Again, we're not here to like go fast. This is not the, the point of this car. We're here just to, uh, oh wait, I think I have to go to the left. Oops. I think this is the way we have to go. Sorry to everyone around. There's two ways you can get out of here. So uh, anyway, there's uh, zero sporting cred. <laughs> it's like, like zero. <laughs> wow. I'm just giving the car in front of us a chance to, to get ahead of us here because this is, he's probably gonna be faster than us. Randomly forward collision warning just popped up for no reason. Like zero, there was nothing. It didn't phantom break, but it definitely was concerned. We'll just kind of wait right here and, and let everyone get ahead. And then I'll pick up the video when, when a car comes up from behind so we can have some fun. This was shocking. I thought it would be kind of competent at everything, but it's really not competent here. Let's sport mode power brake this thing. So left foot hard on the brake, flooring it with the right, torqued over 11 kilowatts. A very leisurely stroll. That's 30, 45, 55, 60. Now granted, we are going uphill, so don't use that as for a time measurement, but it's not quick. <laughs> okay, remember, slow into corners, get the car set. It has a lot of body motions when you get it leaned over. Whoa and just continuing up at hard throttle acceleration. Barely much acceleration going on here. Very quiet. That is part of the, the thing with this car in a sporting sense is it's so, you're so removed from the outside world that this is not its design characteristic, obviously. And I think the owners of this car are not gonna mind that it's not very good at uh, a sporting situation at all. I think they really won't care one bit. So, not even sure it's worth doing any more of this type of driving because this is obviously not what the car is built for. And uh, we've gotten a quick taste of the car on a twisty road and I have to say just, just in terms of inputs, the throttle is the perfect length. It's a top hinged accelerator pedal, uh, but it comes down pretty far so you have very little risk of your foot flipping off or slipping off of it, which is great. The brake pedal, let's do full brakes, ready? Um, it's obviously brake by wire. It actually pops up ABS active. And you can see the body, we left huge skid marks. That was great. But huge body motions on this thing. So it actually would like lose braking force as we would pop up and then the car would compress and we would slow down even more. Um, and of course, it's the same brake pedal as pretty much all the GM EVs in terms of feeling. It's very clicky. It's very uh, almost tactile noises and things like that. So. Uh, interesting brake, but I have no complaints about it. It will blend in regen. We have to try and see how much regen we can get out of it. Um, the overall power is just far too little. The uh, the steering, you point and guess. <laughs> and the whole car from a movement standpoint is just very slow. And very honestly, we're not even going fast. 250 kilowatt output here through the chicane. Oh, it does not like the transitions. The car gets leaned and set as soon as you push it the other way, it gets all very uncomfortable. So yeah, not worth doing any videos on this up in the canyons. So let's <laughs> hit one last corner. <laughs> Even there's just no tire on this car either, but honestly, it shouldn't have any more tire because it does not feel to be tuned for this much, for any more grip, any more grip, it feels like it would just kind of like, I've never driven a car that's so not sporty and not ashamed of it. Like the Cadillac 
if someone at Cadillac is watching this review, they're going to be like, yes, we did not make it sporty. Good job. Do it, you know, testing the car on a twisty road where it's not meant to be. <laughs> but we've confirmed it's not meant to be here at Check all. Check it out. I'm sitting in the Lyric and there goes a Cadillac ELR. Those are awesome. Look at that Cadillac EV buddies. I mean, technically that's a range extended EV, but so cool. So rare. And uh, wow, that's pretty amazing. Well, we have now arrived to an Electrify America charging station where it is pure hecticness over here. This one's completely offline, which is weird. Oh, the horn beep, not a good sign. Charge port door, really curious to see how this charges. Now this charger says it's in complimentary mode. So I don't know, we'll see. Sometimes that means it's derated, sometimes it's not. I just spoke to an EV6 GT owner here who um, said he got full 240 kilowatts, didn't notice anything. So we should be okay. In we go. Uh, he said he got full speed, so complimentary session. The, the plug and charge system is not active right now, but we are just juicing it up now for the first time. We're at about 33%, so let's see what happens in the charging session once we get this thing going. Uh, the I kind of drove it hard. Now the door is not unlocking. There we go. Yeah. One of the signs that we see, we can see here one kilowatt. I'm gonna turn off the climate control because we know that makes a difference in at least the Hummer EV. Let's see how long it takes for this thing to start ramping and we should see that number add to the battery. Well, here we go, ramping up 150 kilowatts, 160, 170, 180 kilowatts now roughly. Screaming along, that's great so far. I mean, it's not, for a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, maybe not amazing, but according to Tom's charging logs, I definitely didn't see this kind of power at this state of charge. The fans just kicked on the vehicle pretty hard. It's screaming right over here. So let's see how long it can hold 180 kilowatts for. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. No idea why we're in complimentary charging because I'm seeing, you know, 350 kilowatt charger giving the car everything it wants, basically. Let's see what's going on in here. You can see about 175 going to the battery pack. So that's great. I don't see any issues with 175 kilowatts at 33% right now. But we have seen some wonky charging stuff on this vehicle. So I'm going to charge it up to 80% or so. So let's see how long it takes to get up there. So the people in the Polestar were just standing around chatting, not plugged in. And we got a line of cars waiting to come in here. So I was like, dude, move your car. Nicely, of course. So they're moving. Uh, they're like, oh, we didn't realize, sorry. So now they're getting out of here. We are still holding 147 kilowatts here at 43%. Wow, much better charging than I remember in the past. This is, I would say, totally acceptable so far. It's not class leading or anything, but not bad. Well, the charging is just linearly, linearly walking itself down. Now there is a big problem with the Lyric where there's no way to get a state of charge display in the vehicle. I can look here and I can see I'm at 49%. We're doing 135 kilowatts or so, which, you know, not the best, but not terrible. I did precondition the vehicle on the way over here. Um, and I it burned a lot of juice, 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour. That is not a representative number, but also less than I thought because I wasn't really driving that hard but you know I don't know we need to do some real testing to see all this stuff but you can slight swipe this through it's not very not very responsive is it but that's okay um anyway yeah 133 kilowatts just sitting there that's not bad charging I have to say and in this case it's actually free so that's pretty sweet um yeah, I'll, I'll, while we're charging up, I'll share my final thoughts on this car as I've now driven it for four hours or so, three hours of driving and a good first impression. Well, we are now 14 minutes into our charging session. It's just sitting, ramping down consistently, normally, very linearly, linearly very, very good session here. Um, you can see everyone's trying to back into this stall that shows as unavailable. And then sometimes it just shows the EA screen, which doesn't really work. So I got to let this guy know what's going on. But unfortunately, just not working, but very good, consistent performance. And um, yeah, the screen's, screen's down on that one. So uh, yeah, pretty unfortunate. Uh, sorry, I was about to tell you that one's un unavailable. Are you the YouTuber? Yeah, oh. yeah. I've seen you. Oh, no way. I'm Hi. Kyle. Great to meet you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, I'm just testing this uh, Lyric today. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know why this one's not working. There's another one over there that's not working, too. It's just, yeah, welcome to Electrify America. <laughs> yeah, I experienced this a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. And we all experience it a lot. It's crazy. But hopefully soon, Hyundai will join the Nax and do Tesla. Yep, hopefully. Hopefully. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Yep. So...
window up. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, everyone says they experience the poor charging experience. It's just that, you know, it's a simple thing. It should just be fixed, but unfortunately it's not. So if you buy a Lyric today, you got to deal with crap charging. But if you buy a Lyric in 2024, or at least today's car will also get the adapter, you'll be able to charge on the supercharger network and not deal with any of this total absolute BS. Okay, so are you ready for my thoughts on the Lyric? <laughs> also, I just wanted to point out this thing. It really bothers me. There's this little push down in the center console and it locks in. And the way to release it, there's a little button on the side, but then it snacks your finger in there and you gotta like almost, you get cut almost pulling it out because it's such sharp plastic. So this is like one of the worst designs because that jams my finger. I can't move, right? It's pushing upward pressure. And when I pull it out, yeah, that's, I don't know what's going on with that. Just don't touch that button. Um, it just seems like this car has a lot of really good things going for it. And then a lot of blatant oversights that I'm just surprised made it through. And I guess it, it surprises me less now why GM has not put this into the press fleet, because I feel like a lot of journalists would pick up on a few of these issues. Um, to me, the interior is the best part of this car. It's a wonderful seating position. It's great. Well, it sits pretty high, but for an SUV, it's fine. Steering wheel's nice. Like the leather quality is totally cool. The seats are great. The buttons are, are weirdly like all slightly different. And so like some of them have a really haptic click here. I'll show you like these. You feel no feedback, but you hear a click. These have a really nice notchy feedback to them, but these have a long, Oh, I was about to say they had a long throw. They don't, but it's still totally different than this, which is, you know, in like a typical German car, they try and make the buttons all feel the same. And these are quite clicky. The window switches are quite quick, clicky, but none of them have any weight to them. So everything's just very clicky, but not very strong. So unlike Audi, which is very clicky, Porsche is very clicky. You got to push hard to get the buttons in here. It's all pretty light. The little things, but that to me takes away a little bit feeling of premiumness or quality. I'm complaining about buttons. That's not a make or break buying decision. Um, the charging performance seems to be good. So I was kind of thinking, okay, if this thing charges like Tom's experience was, that wouldn't be good. But this is charging fine. In 18 minutes, we've added 41 kilowatt hours and we started at 33%. I don't know what happens below 33%, but we saw a peak of 180 something kilowatts at 33%. Like, look, it's not class leading. It's a 400 volt system architecture. I'm actually totally cool. And it's been consistent, which is the first time I've ever had a consistent charging experience with GM. So I'm glad that works. I'm also noticing when I kick AC on when charging, it makes no impact or difference like Hummer EV does. Uh, here, it seems to be much better. I actually don't need it. It's nice out right now, but that's fine. A uh, few other notes about the car that are like actually important rather than me just nitpicking on little things. There's a huge blind spot in the back and the side mirrors to me are very small. So the side visibility is tough out of this car. I don't know if you can see this, but there's this little window and then just like you can't see anything until behind you, especially because that headrest is in the way. And the side view mirrors are quite small. They do have blind spot indicator inside the mirror, but that to me is, is a definite noticeable issue. Uh, Super Cruise seems to be amazing, but that Ford collision thing is over overactive uh, and definitely has been popping up false alerts here and there which is definitely interesting there's no way to see state of charge indicator on the car in exact numbers you do get a bar i heard you can ask google you know the voice assistant system what the state of charge is but when i do that take a listen what's my state of charge for that you'll need to sign in with your google account so I need to sign into my Google account, but I'm a guest driving the car. So you can only know your state of charge if you own the Lyric. So that's just a terrible oversight. Really bad, actually. You should know your state of charge and percentage, what's going on. Um, but the daily driving of this car is really a highlight. It's nice to get in and out of. It looks pretty interesting. It's unique. It's a cool looking car. I, I do, even though I don't love the styling, I think it carries a little bit of Cadillac Detroit presence that is like American premiumness. And I really like that about the car. Uh, and definitely like I've gotten some thumbs up driving around. And actually there's quite a few viewers here at the charging station. I just drove around. We of course met that guy in the Hyundai, but there's maybe five or six different viewers here. And they were all like, whoa, the Lyric is cool. I'm like, yeah, it shows really well. Certainly a great first impression vehicle. Cruising down the highway, 
way. The noise performance is great. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's wafty, it's really nice. But there does seem to be some little weird issues with the car. The creaks and rattles all up in the top end of this vehicle. I know it's a very vehicle specific thing, but why would you buy a car and then have to bring it back to the dealer to have them fix rattles and creaks and try and have them chase it down? That just doesn't make sense. And then really the big noticeable or notable problem with this car is the performance nature of it. Of course, it's not a, um, you know, performance car in intention. It's never meant to do anything like that. But what it is needing to do, and every especially premium car, especially for over $60,000, needs to do is to have a balance. Needs to, you know, basically not be terrible at anything, but excel in certain areas. This like excels in the daily driving and the comfort, but then is terrible on a back road, really bad. The, the tuning for performance here needs some software updates. It needs adaptive suspension. There's no adaptive suspension, no air suspension. Perhaps the V trim will have that. So that leaves a lot of room for performance uh, improvements here, but I hope that doesn't come as a compromise of daily driving and the other trims because it needs to be this comfortable for daily driving. Sound system's totally cool. Um, the UI is pretty, you know, it's GM. It's actually fine. I have no major issues with it. Um, you know, the screens are relatively nice. Overall, I, I, I actually do recommend the Lyric for someone who wants something nicer than the Maki, something nicer than Ionic 5, something nicer than a Polestar 2, but doesn't want to spend up the money for an iX or e-tron. If you can spend the money for iX, e-tron, EQE, Tesla Model X, something around there, you're getting mo you're getting a better value car. I mean, you're getting more things for your money. It's not like this is a bargain and whoa, it's pr it's like okay, I see why it's priced sixty three thousand dollars because there are some issues with it. Um, no question, iX and e-tron just smoke this thing. In my my opinion, um, also on efficiency, my efficiency was terrible today, and I I drove it hard, but not like consistently hard the whole time. I don't know. Uh, but the charging performance is great, actually. 74%, 105 kilowatts. That's not bad at all. So I got to say, like, this Lyric is, uh, it's been a whole roller coaster of emotions driving this car today. At first, I was really hot on the car. It looked cool, felt cool, had some neat features. And then I started pushing buttons and it's a little bit plasticky in certain areas when you really dive into it and you get totally blinded by this reflective surface from the center console. And then, uh, you know, I took it in the canyons. I was like, oh boy, this is, this is terrible. But then some highway cruising, some super cruising, the super cruise system rocks. It's so good if you live near pre-mapped highways, which I don't in Colorado, but certainly amazing if you can use it often. And then, uh, you know, taking it to the charger, I was like, well, you know, this is kind of the make or break. If it charges acceptably, the car's fine. I totally could see why someone would buy this. If it doesn't charge acceptably, then not cool. Uh, and it's charging better than expected. 75%, 104 kilowatts, very nice, 76% 104 kilowatts. We've added 51 kilowatt hours in 23 minutes. That's awesome. I'll charge it up to 80. I'll give you the final numbers and then we'll end the video. Well, we have quickly reached 80% state of charge, 28 minutes from 33 to 80. It's not class leading again. The Ionic we were just chatting over here charges much faster. However, they do the weird GM thing where at 80%, they just fall off a cliff with DC charging. And what's weird is when you hit 90%, it'll walk itself back up. So I've seen this in Hummer. I've seen Tom's recordings of this. So you never want to charge past 80% in a Lyric on a road trip. You pretty much just sat at 100 kilowatts to 80%, no problem. So this is a car you charge to 80, you unplug and you get out, which I've just done here. And we're waiting for it to release the connection. There we go. And now we can go. That was a free charging session. We put in 53 kilo, 58 kilowatt hours in 28 minutes. Again, 33 to 82%, you know, a half hour charging stop, not the end of the world. We got to put this silly cat back in, close it up. But wow, what a really brutal charging experience this was. We had you know, a bunch of years that Lucid is still there idling the car. I mean, just crazy. Um, we got to start towing these things because that's just insane that that's happening. Uh, looks like someone dented the side of their car already right here in the back. Well, honestly, they deserve it if they're going to treat others like that. Anyway, we are off and heading back to DGDG. So let's end this. Video. And here we are pulling back into DGDG. Check out this sick RS6 Avant they have for sale. They have two Audi RS6 Avants for sale, which is very great to see. So, yeah, we're just pulling back in over here and um, all is good with the world. I charged this thing back up and 
man, I'm kind of liking the lyric for daily driving the more time I spend with it. Um, definitely, there's a lot of improvements that they need to make, but uh, overall, seems like a good starting point. Perhaps they'll do a mid-cycle refresh and fix a lot of the trim, build quality, rattles, issues, just the integration of everything. Get a state of charge on here and... Um, yeah, well, I'll give you my final thoughts and I keep saying that, but let's just end this video here in a second. Well, there we go, it is back. There's a couple of things I wanna try out that I haven't fully figured out totally yet. This is the key for the vehicle. It's just like a general GM key. It seems pretty unpremium if I'm honest, but let's just see how this works. I'm gonna press once and then the door doesn't open. So this is normal when the car's unlocking. It locks itself, you have to do a long press and then it goes. So it's like the unlock of the door, like pops it open and then it gets stuck almost. So you have to press a little bit longer on that door handle than you'd expect. Now that the car is unlocked, I think I can just hit it and it opens up. So that's a little bit weird. Seems like funky stuff going on. Overactive sensors on the vehicle certainly are a problem. The creaks and rattles are certainly a problem. And then I was also talking to a friend of mine who has um, uh, knows some Lyric owners and they were saying that the air conditioning was pretty weak in certain ones. I did not experience that today in this one. The AC ripped, it was warm. We were driving it hard. Like you would think the battery cooling would take over. No problem at all with the air conditioning in my quick test. However, I did notice that the air vents like never stayed where I left them. So I'd put them on my face, which almost seems like they don't go high enough. And then they would like droop. And I'm like, well, I have to just keep adjusting. I've never had to adjust air vents more than in the Lyric. But again, it just seems almost like they needed another six months to just dial in the stuff on this vehicle. And that kind of feels the case for all GM EVs at this point, right? Hummer EV was really cool. This was cool. Silverado's cool, but they all have little somethings where it's like, just wait another six months and fully dial in the car, I think. So maybe model year 24 Lyric will have a lot of these things figured out. I sure hope so. It's one of those vehicles that it's like, if you can spend the money for a nicer car, spend the money. Like just spec up to iX, e-tron, eqe. That's to me, I would spend the money. I would not consider this. I would either go Model Y if you want to save a little bit of money or spec up to one of those nicer ones. If you want to live in this middle ground, I actually think the GV70 is the better choice. It has a lot less range and it has probably about the same or maybe less efficiency, but it's way faster. It's got more tech almost, I think. And the charging performance is even better than this. Now, the charging performance of this was inconsistent with Tom, but in my quick, again, we only charged it once, but in that test, it was very reasonable. Pretty big peak and then just walked its way pretty nicely down, 100 kilowatts at 79% was reasonable, and then just falls off a cliff at 80. And I'm okay with whatever happens above 80, I mean, whatever. It's not like a Mach-E that went to 12 kilowatts when that launched, this is better. So there's definitely still some work to be done with this car. There's definitely cost cutting in the vehicle. It's not a luxurious, you know, 80, 90, $100,000 Cadillac electric. It's 63 grand. It's pretty reasonable for that. What's crazy is the Blazer, which I believe shares a lot of the same architecture of this vehicle, is roughly the same cost as the Lyric. So if you're gonna be considering Blazer or Lyric, maybe Lyric's the way to go. As a daily driver, as a commuting device with Super Cruise, with long distance ability, this car works. It's cool. It's a conversation piece and it's interesting, but you are not getting nearly as refined a package as BMW, Audi, Mercedes, or Tesla. Uh, and I love that I can put Tesla up there, but truly Model Y is sorted. Um, you're not getting a fully sorted car with this. You're gonna have bugs, you're gonna have some issues and creaks and rattles and little things. I gotta tell the dealer, be like, hey, you guys gotta like, you know, just drive this thing around and just start putting X's where you hear all these creaks and stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. That was my first experience with the Cadillac Lyric. I'm so glad you were able to join me for this relatively long video, as most of our first drives are. I really hope Cadillac lets us spend some time with them, but I kind of get a sense as to why they haven't made their way into the press fleet yet. It almost feels like the car's just not finished. So let's hope they can finish whatever they need to finish, get them in the media fleets so we can drive one and do you know all the range, charging tests, everything out of spec needs to do. Thanks for watching. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.